So today I want to talk about a few mistakes that new Linux beginners make when editing their disk space. This will help save you some time and grief, especially if you're new to Linux and will apply across all Linux distributions. The first mistake I see and I want to talk about is when you're changing up the size of your disk. Let's say that there's some extra space that you haven't quite taken advantage of in your partition on your disk and you wanna expand the root partition. There's a great tool to use, it's called Gparted. Sometimes Linux distributions do not come with this by default, if you do sudo apt install gparted here in Debian, that should be enough to get us the package. Here we go. Yes, I highly recommend this tool amongst all other. You can launch a tool with administrative privileges to make edits to any disk that you have on your system. As we can see here, we have my main root partition here, followed by a little bit of swap space and then unallocated space. So for beginners who don't necessarily understand how this works, well, I'm not going to be able to edit any of this because I'm on my actual root system. You can't change anything that's what's known as mounted to the system because that means it's currently in use. So this right now is a big no-no because I am on the actual mounted system. It should not allow me to change anything around. The first thing I would want to do here is actually remove this swap space. That's another thing that people will get caught up on. They see this spot right here that looks like it's blocking you from extending your root partition. Now the swap space is something that's introduced by Linux to help you with memory overflow, at least for the most part. There are some other reasons swap exists, but since it's here in the middle, you can't just extend the root partition. You have to get rid of the swap space. That's something else a lot of newcomers experience in Linux when they're trying to resize things and look at this. So we have swap off and that will turn swap off and then we should be able to delete this partition. Now, will it work? Let's hit the check mark and see if it applies. All right, operations completed. And why did that one complete? Well, that one technically isn't in use. So it's successfully completed. But now let's try extending the size of the root partition. First, I'll want to delete this extended partition because it was the swap space. So I'm gonna hit delete and we're good there. Let's see if we can apply that as well. Sure enough, we're good. I'm gonna close out. Now I'm going to try extending the root partition. Will it allow us to do this one? So I do a resize or move and I'm just gonna drag and drop over here allowing around a gig of space at the very end. I'm gonna hit resize. Sure enough, we're good there, but we have to hit the apply option. Will it apply this time? Everything was successful as well. Finally, I'm going to recreate my swap. And I accidentally gave it 10 gigs instead of one gig. I only need about four, so I'm gonna change that around. One thing that you need to understand, some Linux systems will not allow you to do this on the fly. Instead, you'll need to boot into a live disk image in order to actually make these changes. You can run gparted on the live disk, and then you'll make a selection of the proper disk that you're trying to edit up here and you can do the following changes like I've done. This is currently in a live image as well. I just wanna let you know that sometimes you're not able to do this while you have an actual mounted system. Anyways, if I wanna finish extending this over, I'm actually gonna resize this once more. Very easy. I'm going to take it so I have around four gigs. I misread that, that should be good enough. And then finally, I have this four gigs left over. All right, and then I can hit new and I can change this to an extended partition or just create Linux swap out of it. Before we had an extended partition, I can also make this a primary partition, it doesn't really matter, but I just need to make sure that it's a file system Linux swap. And then if I hit add, now I have the swap space right behind. I can also right click and then I need to make sure that I hit swap on. Well, why is it not letting me do swap on? Well, I need to actually allow the pending operations to happen. After I apply those, if things are successful and they were, then I should have my swap partition. It says the swap flags on, but I need to actually turn swap on in order for the system to accept the swap, swap space. I can check this out and see if the system now has the four gigs by starting a terminal and then doing free. I can look at the swap space and see that I have 4.2 gigs available to me now as a partitioned device. I know newcomers, at least in my portion of the Linux community, run into issues with trying to extend their disk space. Hopefully this helps you understand how the Linux partitioning scheme works. And just a few key ways that we want to recap on is one, try to use gparted. It's a great tool. Number two, use a live image or disk to make sure that your current system is not mounted and you can make edits to it. Three, when extending storage, make sure that there's nothing behind the current partition. That way you can make an extension of space. If there is another partition that has data on it, be very careful not to delete that one because you are going to run into issues with potentially loading the system. Never 
touch the EFI part and or anything at the beginning that is shaded. That means that there is data here and you cannot edit that. So again, do not edit anything with the EFI part or anything that has data on it. And five, when dealing with swap space, make sure that after you designate it as swap space, to then turn swap on. Otherwise your system will not see this as swap space and will not use it until you have it enabled. Those are just a few things that I wanted to touch up on. Make sure to like the video if you haven't already. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.